Hi friends, I'm going to show you in this video how to find every limit. It looks like the following limit. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine of ax over sine of bx. So a and b are just some numbers like 2 and 5 or say 2 and then 1 half or b, whatever, just some numbers. You may encounter these and that the a and the b values are different. But there's a kind of underlying logic that's beautiful that we can apply across even when a and b are just basic what we call parameters. All right, and then you can plug in particular values at the end if you like. So let's work through this process. This relies on remembering that one of the most important things you can do in math is multiply by 1. Or some form of 1 that's useful that allows you to transform an expression in some fashion. So here's going to look like this. I'm going to say the limit as x approaches 0. And then I'm going to write this as, let's see here, sine ax over 1. And I'm going to separate the sine bx. So I'm going to multiply by 1 over sine bx, like this. This is a perfectly allowed move. I'm just rewriting the fraction. I'm simplifying the fraction. Now, why would I do this? Because then each fraction can be multiplied by an appropriate form of the number 1. So take a look. For this piece, there's a well known limit that says that. The limit as x approaches 0, as long as it says something like sine of ax over ax, there's an ax in the bottom also, that limit is equal to 1. Well, the issue is we don't have ax in the bottom to match this ax, we have a 1. But we can make, make this have ax by writing basically ax times 1, but I cannot just randomly arbitrarily multiply by ax. I also have to then do the same thing in the top. So I'm going to do here ax. That's allowed, no problem, because this ax divided by that, by that ax is just 1, so you're not really changing anything, ultimately. Now, the same thing applies over here. This says 1 over sine bx. The issue is, I would like up here to have a bx, so I'm just going to multiply by bx up here, this way. But again, I cannot just arbitrarily change a part of a fraction. Going back to those basic principles, right? When you rewrite fractions, you got to multiply top and bottom by the same thing. So I'm going to also, for example, multiply sine bx here by bx, like this. All right, let me extend the fraction line here a little bit. So it looks like this thus far, you see? Now, let me stress this. This is allowed because ax divided by x is 1, and also because bx divided by bx is also equal to 1. Then you continue. So let's take a look at what we can do next. I'm going to pick up down below here. Okay, so equals. And what can we do next? Well, what we can do is I want to isolate sine ax over ax times 1, which is just ax. And I want to isolate bx over sine bx and then take this other bx here and put, put it somewhere else. So in other words, look. I'm going to say the limit as x approaches 0. I'm going to take the following. So let me do this maybe in yellow here. I'm going to take this ax and I'm going to put it over this bx. These are all allowed moves because you're just moving parts of fractions around. So it's going to give you the following. Then. The limit as x approaches 0 of ax over bx. Then you copy the remaining parts. So you're going to have sine ax. So sine ax. And then you're going to divide that by ax times 1, which is just ax. Now, you're going to take and multiply by the bx on the top that I haven't moved. And then the sine bx in the bottom, this way. This is what you have thus far. Then you continue with this. Well, here, notice that this is an x and x. Let's say it's never equal to 0. We're taking a limit. So you can cancel off the x's. So what you end up with then on the next line is essentially the following. Take a look. I'm going to write next here as follows. I'm going to have what is essentially a over b. And the x's will cancel off. But the a over b really is like a constant. So for that reason, I can place it outside the limit. a over b. Outside the limit and then basically cancel off this x with that x. So a, b constant outside the limit. Then you have the limit. As x approaches here 0, and what remains is the sine ax over ax, 
And then there's a basic property of limits when you're multiplying limits. In other words, what we have is kind of like this, really, you see? I haven't stressed this too much. We have the limit of x approach to 0, a, b constant outside, and then you can, because this is multiplication, you can distribute the limit to each piece, and you're going to have a, b times the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of ax over ax times the limit as x approaches 0 of, let's see, we had up there, so it's going to be 1 times bx, this is bx up here, okay? So it's going to be bx over here, over sine of bx, like this. So this is what we have thus far. Now, what the nice thing is, a, b is just whatever. Each of these individual limits is well known. You can check this, but this limit is 1. And likewise, with this limit here, this is also equal to 1. Therefore, you just end up with, at the very end, a, b. So, a over b. Let me stress this, a over b right here. And you're going to multiply by 1 times 1. So times 1, times 1, and therefore at the very end, the only thing remaining would be a times b. Or a over b, rather, I meant to say. So a over b, like this. In other words, take a look at the relationship. The answer is a divided by b. In other words, it's just whatever this is right here, this a, you divide by this b, and that becomes the value of the limit as these steps indicate. Just guess the idea across. So thank you, friends. Please give a like, please subscribe. I hope it's been helpful, insightful. I will see you in another video.